Of the 7 billion people on this planet, only 530 have been in orbit, which is pretty insane to think about. Astronauts must be incredibly brave, right? I mean, they are shot out of our world into foreign territory where a number of things could go wrong. Today, let's take a look at what astronauts fear the most. From burning up during re-entry to floating off alone in space. Let's talk about this and more only in today's video. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the video, Top 10 Dark Things Astronauts are afraid of in space. But before we get into today's list, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, which is G2A.com. If you love gaming, unbeatable prices, and great steals and deals, then G2A.com is the place for you. G2A.com is the place to go if you want to get video games, gaming consoles, tabletop games, gaming accessories, collectibles, and more for unbeatable prices. Don't wait for Black Friday. G2A has big sales all year round. Like they have sales up to 90% off. What? Pinch me. Check out this week's sale. Now, as someone that does a fair share of gaming myself, G2A.com has been my site to go to. I personally love their selection of horror games. Make sure to check the link in the description to unlock a site full of amazing products for unbelievable prices. Starting off this countdown, we have the fear of the unknown. During an interview with astronaut Chris Hadfield, he said that the thing he feared the most about going into space was the fear of the unknown. Because anything can go wrong at any time. Plus, no matter how much you prepare, there's no way you can prepare for everything that could go wrong. Because you don't know everything that can go wrong. Plus, astronauts are miles away from home with limited supplies and contact. They're pretty much on their own to save themselves if anything does go wrong. So it's the fear of not knowing what's to come that terrifies them. In our ninth spot, we have space junk. Obviously, space is filled with floating space objects, but also tons of man-made junk, like debris from old satellites, rocket ship pieces, lost equipment, you name it. It said that there are 28 million pieces of space debris floating around up there. That's about 6,000 tons of space debris. On top of that, each piece flies around at 18,000 miles per hour. At any second, debris could crash into the astronaut's spacecraft and wipe them out. In fact, it said that even tiny paint flecks can damage a spacecraft when traveling at these velocities. Imagine what anything larger could do. So space junk is certainly something astronauts fear. I mean, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I would be way too paranoid. In our eighth spot, we have loss of communication. When astronauts are in space, they rely on ground control to help them out. Ground control plays a critical part in the space mission success. They make sure that everything goes as planned and that the craft stays on course. So imagine how frightening it would be to all of a sudden lose contact with them. Astronauts are then left alone just floating through space. They then would have to manually fly their spacecraft home. Astronauts have lost connection a couple of times, but it's only been for a couple of hours. Hours. Moving on to number seven, we have the toxic atmosphere. According to NASA astronaut Drew Morgan, he is worried about space's toxic atmosphere. He admitted to this on social media when responding to a comment that read, what is the biggest and most terrifying thing astronauts fear about being in space? There are a number of things in space that make it so deadly for astronauts. For starters, exposure to space can cause ebolism, hypoxia, and hypocapnia. Not only that, but astronauts can get sick from being on the moon. When the Apollo Apollo astronauts returned from the moon, they got sick off of the moon dust on their spacesuits. It made their throats sore and eyes water. The particles are so fine, but sharp like glass. In fact, it said that, and I quote, particles 50 times smaller than a human hair can hang around for months inside your lungs. The longer the particle stays, the greater the chance for toxic effects. But there are so many other things in space that can have a negative impact on the astronauts, like exposure to UV rays and radiation, which can cause cell mutation. Also, there's no pressure in space. The lower the pressure, the lower a liquid's boiling point is. But since in space there is no pressure, the boiling point can easily drop to an astronaut's body temperature, meaning their blood and other liquids in their body would start to boil. Not a pleasant way to go, that's for sure. In our sixth spot, we have the depressurization. Astronaut Drew Morgan claims that astronauts are also scared of depressurization. He said, and I quote, there's always the possibility that we could depressurize or that a hole could be punctured by a micrometeoroid or something and we could leak our atmosphere overboard. So let's say that an astronaut was exposed directly to the vacuum of space. 
space. Since space doesn't have atmospheric pressure, the astronauts lungs will expand and burst. After that, the water in their soft tissues will vaporize, causing their whole body to swell up. Then bubbles would form in the veins, blocking blood flow. And the astronauts bowels, bladder and stomach will explode, expelling their contents. But don't worry, the astronaut would die from loss of oxygen first before all of that happens. Still, it's terrifying to think of. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with getting sick. In space, there's no hospitals, there's no nurses, there's no doctors. So if you get sick or injured, you're on your own. You need to rely on your crew members to help you out. This is another fear for astronauts, getting sick while in space or seeing their crew get sick while in space. Also, if one person gets sick somehow, chances are others will too. Space is a pretty germy environment. When a person sneezes on Earth, the snot particles shoot out about three to six feet and then gravity knocks them out of the air into the floor. But in space, there's no gravity. So if an astronaut sneezes or coughs, it's lingering in the air for their companions to breathe in and enjoy. As a result, sickness or diseases can spread really fast. Another fear they have is dying in orbit because A, that would suck and B, what are the crew members supposed to do with the astronaut's dead body? They'll be stuck living beside it for days until they return home. Has to be traumatizing. Moving on to number four, we have the mechanical failures. This is another fear that Chris Hadfield brought up that's common among astronauts. And that's fear that they will experience some sort of mechanical failure or defect, whether that be during liftoff, while in orbit, docking, or re-entry. I mean, there have been a number of disasters already, like the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster. In 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into the flight. As a result, the shuttle broke down over the Atlantic Ocean and all seven crew members on board lost their lives. This was due to a failure of the O-ring seal in the right solid rocket booster. In space, if their spacecraft fails or if their systems malfunction, they're pretty much screwed. So no one can come out there to save them. Moving on to number three, we have floating off into space. Although it's never happened to any astronauts so far, it's a very real fear that astronauts have. And hey, I don't blame them. Anyways, if astronauts spacewalk, they have to tether themselves down. If those tethers fail, oh boy, they're drifting out into space. No matter how much they kick or flail their arms, it won't bring them back to the shuttle. Now NASA does have these emergency jetpack things that can help fly them back to safety. But if the fuel runs out, they're in trouble. They'll be floating around for seven and a half hours until their breathable air runs out. Or until they get hit by space junk and die. Or the space junk could cause a hole in their helmet or suit and then we know what would happen, okay? So yeah, I can see why astronauts are afraid of getting separated from the spacecraft and floating away. Moving on to number two, we have the re-entry. So let's say everything goes fine. Takeoff was a success, the crew survived orbiting space and landing on the moon. Now the only thing they have left to do is come back home. You'd think that they would be excited, you know, to be back home, eating normal food, and you know, being where gravity is. Turns out returning home is something that they fear. And that's because they could burn up or get destroyed destroyed upon re-entry. This happened in 2003 with the Columbia Space Shuttle. Upon re-entering Earth's atmosphere, the shuttle started to disintegrate. Sadly, all seven crew members on board lost their lives. And now, if they do manage to survive re-entry, they gotta worry about landing safely instead of just crashing down full speed into the ground. And in our number one spot today, we have the catastrophe. Honestly, I never even thought about this, but according to Chris Hadfield, some astronauts are afraid of a huge catastrophe occurring on Earth while they're off the planet. Now you might think, hey, that's good. At least you weren't on the planet to witness it. But uh, hello, that means that Earth is now in ruins and their loved ones are dead. Who's going to be alive and at NASA helping them navigate back home? Chances are nobody. So they would be stuck in space, just orbiting around until they run out of supplies. And even if they did somehow re-enter Earth successfully, they're coming back home to nothing. And that's a pretty dark thing to think about. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below or any of the people watching astronauts? Are you an astronaut? Do you want to be an astronaut? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I will see you when I see you. Hello, space is filled with floating space objects. It's a little loud. According to NASA, astronaut for oh I didn't look up how to pronounce any of these words ebolism hip, hypoxia and hypocapnia after that the water in their soft tissues
Before that, the water in their before that, I mean no after that. This happened in 2003 with the Columbia Space. Sh if they do manage to